Before we get on record, one thing we do, I don't know if it's right, we can just spend all the money we want. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 <laughs> the Lord still blessing, y'all. I would be still blessing. I couldn't mix that up if you had a life out of it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Something to him, so I can get him out of the bag. You run a railroad, you start on time. <laughs> this is real, there he is. Safety Committee to order. Uh, Ms. Roberts, will you call the roll, please? Dwight Carter. Here. Fred Castle. Here. Daryl Gillum. Here. Linda Kimbrough. Here. John Metz. Here. Bob Palmer. Here. Stacy Vaughn. Here. Mr. Chamberlain, we have all members present. Thank you. Uh, move into the approval of the consent agenda for today's meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. You make that statement. Yes, sir. Uh, Motion by Commissioner Vaughn, second by Commissioner Metz. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, we have no minutes to uh, be approved, so <coughs> we'll move right on into the order of business. And the first item is the EMA report. I'm going to use this table instead of moving over if that's okay. Uh, July 24th this year <clears throat> through EMA, we had the countywide exercise at uh, Sigourney Middle School. It involved multiple agencies here in the county. All agencies met after this event and found out that all of us needs to come together and tweak our plans to make everything work better. Uh, every, all agencies involved had good ideals to improve services. That's what we're gonna look at, uh, hopefully for the next year when they do it. Uh, yesterday, down here at Cherokee Estates, which is one of the county's one of the county's largest gated communities, they became Firewise, a state certified Firewise community, uh, the only one that we've got in Hawkins County, and I was real proud to be part of that down there with them, helping them for the last year to get that with forestry. Uh, for those of y'all maybe not have been down there, uh, speaking to it on a winter time aspect or a fire aspect that is going that would be a nightmare down there you got 80 some residents in there part of them's seasonal part of them's full-time uh, one way in one way out it catches on fire anything in there it's, it's a tender box but they have worked a lot down there cleaning out around their homes uh, making it safer we're working on plans now we have a meeting scheduled for the first two weeks in September with the uh, homeowners association down there on their evacuation plans of where they're going to evacuate the people to if they need to or whatever. Uh, they're getting very proactive. 
the Sevier County Fire really made them step up and listen. And I think by them getting certified, it's gonna spread throughout the rest of the gate communities that's in the Woodland area. We got, uh, what is it, Walnut? Walnut. Down, we got that down there, what's the one off of uh, Nanny Ridge? Walnut Grove, no. Yeah. Walnut Bend. 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 Yeah, Walnut Bend. Uh, Legacy Bay is even talking about it. They have very little woodland down there, but they're still, they're even talking about it also. They've got one up in Carter County. Yeah, the Walnut Grove. The up Walnut there. Grove, yeah. I believe. Yeah. But all these are, are looking at that. These grants, they're getting grant. They got grant money. There's more grant money for any of them that wants to do it. Uh, it's just something that's, it's very important to the county for them to do it. Now, is that, that <coughs> uh, private, the road's private? Yes, once you go through the gate, it's private. This is up here yes. in Carter Valley. It's, it's the roads are private. They're maintained by yes. themselves. They spoke down there yesterday. The, uh, the last storm we had come through here a couple weeks ago, it blocked multiple roads in there. They couldn't get in or out. And they didn't have a plan in place for uh, removal of the trees and stuff. And most of the people there are retired, you know, that type of people, whatever down there. And that, uh, They've had to get them a contractor to come in to be on contract to clean, open up the roads and stuff for Because it would be, you know, EMS had to get there. County takes care of it to the gate, but if they can't get past that, it's, right. no, it's no good. Uh, got a damage assessment class scheduled for September the 18th at 6 o'clock at the health department for anyone that wants to come. I've got to send this out to all the county agencies and all the county offices holders over here uh, to update the ones that's already been certified and get new people certified for damage assessment in Hawkins County. Uh, the state is really pushing this. Uh, they're going around talking to all the counties that FEMA is changing their protocols on how we get money. Uh, their wording is, is making it a little more user friendly to get money from the federal government if we do things the right way, paperwork, you know, dotting our I's, crossing our T's and everything. And to have a team of people from all over the county, not just one agency or two agencies, but from like tax assessors, uh, fire departments, rescue, EMS, uh, business people, anybody who wants to take the class is welcome to take it. And when something happens, they can be called upon to go out and do damage assessment. It saves a lot of time, gets federal government in here quicker. Uh, we've got meetings with rural health and the nursing homes, we have several exercises that's gonna be scheduled between now and the first of the year that's involving the nursing homes and rural health here in, in Roswell. Uh, right now, I don't know what all it's gonna involve, what they're wanting to do, We've got a meeting with them uh, after lunch today to discuss what they want. Uh, don't know who, how far they wanna go, but they're, since the nursing homes and the medical home, health medical and everything got rolled under FEMA and the state, it's, <coughs> they're pushing them hard to have plans and exercise their plans. Instead of just saying we done a drill, they want to actually have one done. So that's what we've got. We've got that going on right now. That's it on the MA. Okay. Point out your safety report while you're on your feet. Okay. Safety report is we've had the, our training through local government insurance is current on a regular basis here with the county, with the highway department, uh, uh, office holders here or whatever, uh, they're doing a real good job keeping them trained. Also doing inspections with them. When they come in here to do the training, they get with myself and we go around to certain areas in the county that we own and do inspections, finding little issues and whatever and doing. And after they do that, they give us a report of recommendations and pretty much we're doing what they recommend on everything that uh, to be changed or whatever. I know we've uh, had some issues with Breaker boxes being blocked and stuff like that, and that's, that's being taken care of. Uh, second thing on safety decks and we had an issue with the convenience centers this past weekend that uh, had some new compactors put in, and there's was misunderstanding on the word automatic operation, and they took all the buttons loose from where the operators use to operate the compactor from their, their building they have on site. And we met with them Monday, met with Charlie, met with, uh, or contacted the vendor, and they've now got ordered a 
bin that goes on top of the compactor that will allow people not to be able to get into the compactor. They can't reach the compactor inside, can't touch the moving parts. And therefore that button will be hooked back up in their building and they can run it from outside or inside. It helps the operators, the inclement weather is their biggest problem. They're not, they don't want to stand out in the rain. They don't want to stand out there. This new system, you have to hold it. You can't just start it and walk away. It has to be held. So that's what we're doing. And it's going to be, it's ANSI compliant, OSHA required. Uh, all the OSHA requirements are being met. So we're getting that done to help them out on that. And pretty much that's it on safety. Okay. Anybody got questions on safety report? Uh, the ADA report. Okay, ADA is continuing like our, our plan is. Uh, I know Miss Roberts has had our, our maintenance department has already started working on some of the issues we have here in this building to make the necessary changes for ADA compliance in our restrooms or whatever. And my understanding that's just. At no cost, it was just normal it's labor or whatever here, take down a style and put a lock on the inside of a door or whatnot, such as that. We still have the compiling of the list that will be turned over to this committee sometime before the first of the year uh, with the, I guess you would say, the grocery list of what needs to be done. And it'll be up to them to sit down and put money figures with it and see what can be done between the year 2023 is the deadline that they have to start making the change for what we got. We have some issues that's gonna to have to be addressed, but I don't think from what we're looking at right now, it's not gonna be no astronomical figure. It's your, your main buildings, which is your Justice Center, your courthouse and the annex is already pretty much ADA compliant. So we don't have that many buildings left. That's what we got on that. Any questions on the ADA report? All right, thank you, Gary. Uh, next report comes from Sheriff Carl, Lieutenant Woods. Do you have any? Don't really have any. Don't have any. All right. Thank you. Uh, 911 report. I really don't think it's going to be. Okay. Next one, Hawkins County EMS report. My part should be short this week too. So um, we have swapped to a new billing company. Uh, the report that you have in front of you, even though it says year to date, that is actually just from June first. That's when we swapped to the new billing company. That's June first through yesterday. Uh, your call volumes, as well as the the times, uh, which is on the next page, and you have to break down of from time of dispatch to en route to on scene. Um, I didn't include the whole turnaround time of transporting and then clearing up the call. Um, we have received a uh, AFG grant, uh, which is through FEMA, for a new ambulance. Um, still doing the paperwork on all that, so hopefully within the next few months we'll be able to order another new ambulance. Uh, we've received that one ambulance back that was involved in the accident. Uh, I give her a copy of the updated uh, vehicle list. And to go back to the last meeting, um, I know there was some questions about uh, the two minutes and the four minutes response time. Um, we do have a program together now of reviewing those uh, emails that 911 send us. So Wayne's over that. I'm gonna let him explain our process and everything such as that. Uh, so that way y'all can understand what we're, what we're doing to, to investigate the issues, the problems that we're experiencing on uh, being over the time there. So, turn it over to Wayne now. Hey Jason, before you sit down, how many, how many vehicles do you have now that don't have high mileage? Don't have, we have two. Two, and then you the get reason. one order. So that yes. gives you three. That's, that's very well, the, the one that we bought last year, the, the new one, uh, it currently has 67,000 miles on it within the first year of it being in operation. So, okay. But uh, the, the newest one that we just got back last month uh, has 6,500 miles on it now. So, so you're getting another one. Uh, what we've done in this was
was we uh, found a computer program that records all radio traffic uh, throughout the day. Um, we go in each time Miss Merle sends an email. I go in and I print it out. I brought all the emails since May 15th that I've received and reviewed. But in case somebody wants to review any of them, and they will be available to audit at any time if I need to. We print those off. Um, I document the run number, the accident report, the incident report that's on the complaint card, the day of the occurrence, the crews I get from the radio traffic of who's on the radio and what I document. And what priority is and what station it's dispatched to. From there, we review the time stamped. Um, I do have an example, the name of the program we use as an example of what to do. Each, each time the radio is keyed up, it time stamps what time it was. Of course, the times aren't going to match exactly with what 911 has because our computer may be a minute or something off. But I don't use the time, I just use it as to base a lift. I don't use the exact like, to match the time for the frequency. So when the tone goes off until 911 gives us the information, I start time at that point when they start talking. Um, I, I listen to see when the crew acknowledges the call, when they go on route. We take into account the radio traffic um, and everything that we can take into account for at that time. And um, we document how long that was between when they actually would not want to stop talking to the crew when they route to the And uh, we also give a, a 10 second Anything that's over the two or four minutes, um, one out here, this should be okay. I use this form, document everything on them. Anything that's over the time, uh, I email to all three supervisors, the three assistant supervisors, and Jason and Bob. And the supervisors gets with that crew and gets a reason documented on the report and sign it. I've got some about one of us, we're going to have to get with 911 on a few things just to tweak the system up, but so far it's been just a good system. Um, I'm not sure what the difference in the, where their time stuff, time stamps come from, and the difference in the computer stuff. I'd like to get that tweaked out until the first period. Well, they get the computer synchronized? I don't think that's possible. <laughs> well, I don't know. We're, um, anyway, we can get you know, closer. You get them. Yeah. That's what I mean. If you get them time, yeah. time synchronized, it's like a time yeah. clock or anything else. But it's it's become a good thing. Uh, we have found several issues that's been addressed. And anything that's, if we have one person that has excessive times, uh, I just send that straight to Jason. We can fix that situation. Hopefully, that'll start narrowing things down. Yeah. I've got everything from May fifteenth until now. I think it was 300 and 324. 324. Yeah. Uh, and the calls was it 2000? 2437. Yeah. And crews, to be honest, you know, so we had an issue there at the beginning and they said we were sleeping through the call, so we put some pagers in place that's real loud. And that's kind of created some of that issue. Mm -hmm. Trying to fix that one for you. Y'all have any questions on that? Like I said, these are available anytime anybody wants to audit them or review them. There shouldn't be any personal information, so they shouldn't be able to get with anything. And I've got the policy, the program, the example. Um, we do it in my phone. If anybody wants to stop by if I'm working, I'll review it with any of you once you go through the system. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Anybody have questions? How's the overtime situation? Is there improving? Yes, we've uh, we've had four uh, a total of four EMTs that went to paramedic schools. They've all graduated and passed their exam. Um, they are now state licensed paramedics. So, paramedic wise, we're doing good. We're short on a one EMT at this time. So, any more? If not, we'll move into Church Hill Rescue Squad Report. Nobody here from Church Hill and Hawkins County. Nobody here from Hawkins County. So, is there any other questions? If 
Hang on for a minute. And before we adjourn, I'd like to thank, first of all, the committee that uh, we've had over 12 years. We, we've had some issues and we've worked through it. And uh, uh, it's been rough at times, but I want to thank the committee members uh, for working so hard on this. And then I'd like to uh, uh, thank you guys out here, your, your first responders. Uh, I know we've been hard on you sometime, and, uh, but really and truly, that was taking the, the people of the county, putting their answers first, because you all know you have one thing to offer Hawkins County residents, and that is service, you know, EMS service. So guys, just, uh, I trust that you all will continue to improve, do your very best, and uh, I want to thank the Sheriff's Department for them being here, these meetings. Yay, I want to thank you for working with us, and especially want to thank Atlanta over there. She's done a great job on yes. uh, keeping us with the minutes, <laughs> and uh, I know she's had her hands full, but, uh, and I want to thank Jeff for being here and, and publicizing what we do. But, you know, with, with this, committee changing, uh, John is probably the only one that possibly could be on the new uh, committee that's appointed by the new administration. Uh, all the rest of us are gone, so uh, I just want to take this chance to thank everybody and tell you that I appreciate you and I think I'm speaking from every member up here that we appreciate you guys. Well, I'd like to echo that. Um, in 24 years working as county commissioner, I want to thank everyone that's worked with me. The kind things that we, that's been said, the unkind things that's been said, and but the the rock responsibility that goes with this position, nobody understands till you've been in here. Because you've got, we've got a responsibility to the county. To our citizens of this county, to ourselves, and to the Lord that created us. And when you boil it all down, we're a servant, whether it's EMS, whether it's the Sheriff's Department, whether it's people working in the county, even Kyle Jeff, a servant, he's a servant to the uh, Times News and the public. But when it's all said and done, I want to think I've been a servant to this county and the residents of this county. And I want to thank everyone in this room for your help, your support, and your encouragement. Thank you. Thank you. I second all that. I third you. <laughs> we only done what we was asked to do by the people, so I know some of it wasn't very popular. Probably made some enemies, probably been cussed a time or two, but I feel good that I did uh, what my district asked me to do. <coughs> and y'all do a great job, just keep it up. You do a great job. That was, ne that was never a question. Never a question. I think I'm gonna start fishing, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds to me like you're fishing every once in a while when you're chasing people. <laughs> okay. No, that's nothing. Yeah. Nothing else, I move with Jeremy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all. Right. Yeah, I just need a question. Well, why don't we get right here? No. So we have and then they call Steam. Can you get it? Can you get it? And then send it to me. So I'll have one. Why don't you all stand underneath the seal there? Well, someone's going to say it, and we'll have to stand behind us. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say, old buddy here. Y'all.
fill in behind. I don't know. Like John might be able to say something. You can suck it up. That's the best way someone actually was sitting right. Yeah, you're not Did sitting underneath it. It was. If you guys don't move over, move over so this seal can be sitting. Center yourself underneath the seal so it doesn't look crooked. You stand right under the seal. Tighten up. Right under. Tighten up. So you want to sit on your lap. Uh, it's not <laughs> All right, on three. One, two, three. And this one's the smiling one. One, two, three. Okay. I smile with both of them. We're supposed to both be smiling. Thank you, guys. Thank you, ladies. What? Do we need to do another seat? Thank you. Uh, four, two, three. I didn't want this to be. Seven, five, four. Thirty-three and fifty-six. It's been really good work.